Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be restructuring our lexer slash tokenizer to utilize our syntax tree that we built a couple videos ago. Right now it's checking for hard-coded strings, but we have things set up now where we can define those strings in our grammar file, so we can change this up a bit to use that new system. And that'll make it a lot easier to expand on the language because we can just add to the grammar file without having to add anything new to our lexer code. Uh, before we get to that, I'd like to start by writing a function to print out a syntax tree. Because uh, right now it does sort of print out what it's doing as it generates the tree from the grammar file, but we don't have a good way of visualizing that or seeing if it's actually working properly. Okay, so I think I'm going to put this in the grammar file since that sort of goes along with everything that's in here. And we avoid print tree. So hopefully this won't be too hard. <laughs> I might end up regretting trying to write this, but we've already come this far. So I want to get the roots name first, I believe printf wait am i using printf here yes i am got confused there for a second i have another project that i'm running in c plus plus i'm using c out in that but i can't use c out in this so funny funny printf moment root dot name root dot text so that'll be uh that'll basically print you know if you have like an identifier named like uh fucking variable. Awful variable name, but what if it's called variable? And it would say like identifier variable. Uh, and then we need to loop through the children. And I think I'm gonna do this recursively. How am I gonna do this? I want it to print like indents for the children. So I guess I need like a, a indent level. That'll start at zero. C doesn't have, uh, C doesn't have um, default arguments, does it? Can I do this? Can I? <laughs> There's no underline. Okay. C does not... Nice. I like that this is the error message, by the way. The error is not, like, unexpected token equals. It's C does not support default arguments. Like, they know. They know what you've done. <laughs> That's funny. I guess I need another string to put at the beginning of this for the indent level and I need that to be indent level length it's not new char char indent equals fuck how do you fucking do this again <laughs> oh yeah I have to use malloc <laughs> that's right so I'm gonna loop through this indent string and set everything to a space and then let me just make sure this is indent level Oops, two equals null. I don't know if I really need to do that here but I don't know a lot of things so I'm just gonna play it safe um, and then I need to put another of these and that will be indent. Ta-da! Okay, so that should correctly print out the things. Now what I'm worried about is potential uh, infinite recursion. Because these are, when it generates the tree, it just generates these as all being references. Like, this program is the same as this program in the tree that gets generated. So I need to make sure that if I encounter uh, something that I've already printed uh, that I will not print it again. So I need to have something to keep track of that and I'll use a Let's see I've done this before because we had a recursive recursion issue in the last video I mean, I guess just an array of things But it needs to be a dynamic array so that I can add things to it. Okay. I think this is the start of something here. So I've made a couple additional uh, variables here, which is already printed, printed count, and print capacity, which is just representing a dynamic array. 
Um, if there's nothing there, if it's null, then we make it malicate with a capacity of one, and we um, and it, and if it does already exist, then we're good. But if there's no more room in it uh, to add additional items, so if the capacity equals the count, then we reallocate it with double the size, um, and then no matter what, we're gonna add our newly printed node to it and increment the count. And then I'm also keeping track of if this is the first node that was printed by checking if the already printed array is null. And then if it is the first one, then we free it at the end. Because you don't want you don't want all of these to be trying to free it because you can't free something that's already free. So only the first one, because the since it's recursive, the first call of this function will also be the uh, the last to finish. So now we need to check if already printed contains our node that we're trying to print because if it does we don't want to add it again so i'll loop through the whole already printed thing printed count and if it contains the uh the, the node that we're trying to print then we won't do this thing okay so i have a variable called found which is just it gets set to true uh, in this for loop if the uh, the root, which is the node we're trying to print, is already printed. Uh, it breaks out of the for loop. If we haven't found it in that array, then we get to do our reallocation if we need to. And then again, it checks if we haven't found it in the array, we add it to the array. Uh, and then also within this if statement is the part that prints the children, because we're not going to print the children for subsequent prints of this uh, node. We're only going to print it the first time. So that should hopefully work. Based on my track record, I am going to guess that it won't, um, but maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay, let's see, make error, one error generated. Array initializer must be an initializer list or string literal. Okay, buddy. I guess I have to make this a pointer. Okay, let's run it. You. Okay, well, <laughs> it did print something. Uh, okay, well, this is wrong because it is supposed to be declaration op assign expression, but it's not supposed to print out the expansions of decal again. Okay, I'm just gonna add some printfs here to try and figure out what's going on. What the fuck? Okay, well that's not right. <laughs> How is the count and capacity going down to two? Oh, right. So these should probably also be pointers. And then I need to dereference them. I think that's it. Oh my god, okay. Uh, something interesting is happening. Count is negative one bazillion something. Oh, you know what? I probably ha, forgot to dereference again. Surely it will work this time. Deckle. Buckle my deckle. Okay. I think I know what's going on. I think this just needs to be another pointer. Pointer to a pointer of a pointer. Oh! We didn't get any errors. <laughs> Did it work this time? Alright, let's see. Program statement decal. So that's going program statement decal. Next should be keyword int. Uh, yeah, dot int. It should do decal, but it shouldn't print keyword int. It should print op assign next. And it did, because it's already been printed. Already printed, yes. Yes, let's go. Oh my God. So you might be wondering, like why all the pointers, right? Why did uh, changing all of the parameters in that function to pointers fix all our issues? So I didn't really talk about it when I was recording this in real time, but I thought it was sort of interesting. So I wanted to go into it in more detail. Um, so let's consider like an example grammar where we have the root node is A 
and that can be expanded into B, C, and B can be expanded into C, and C can be expanded into D. Very basic. And um, what we want it to print is A, and then its expansion B, C, and then B's expansion C, C's expansion D. And we do not want it to print this D down here. No, bad, that is a bad thing, because we've already printed it up here, we don't want it to print it again. So how this actually works, since it's recursive, uh, it starts with a function call on the root node, which is gonna be A. And then that says, okay, I have two children. I have B and I have C. So there's a loop in this function that's gonna call the same function on both of these. And then B is gonna go, okay, well, I also have a child. My child is C. And then C is gonna go, Okay, I also have a child and that child is D. This C also has the same child. And then, so what is the order in which this happens? Well, A gets called first, so A gets printed, and then B is gonna get called, so B gets printed. Uh, and then this C gets called. It does B's children before it does uh, this. Uh, and then C does its child, D. And then we go all the way back up to A and then A gets to call the function for C, C gets to call the function for D. And what we want to happen is that C will recognize, hey, uh, I've already been printed, so I don't need to print my uh, expansion again. And it wasn't doing that. It was printing them constantly every time, which was an issue because then you get into infinite loops and shit. So um, the solution, right, was to make a, a list of all of the things that we've already printed. So A gets printed, and then the list is going to be A. It's just A. We've only printed A. B gets printed, so it's going to be A, comma, B. Uh, when C gets printed, A, B, C. I think you can guess where this is going. A, B, C, D. Now, here's where the issue arises. When this list is being passed between the different function calls, remember, each of these nodes, when it gets printed, it's a separate function call from its parents. Uh, each time this list gets passed, it's being copied. So this is not the same as this. They do not reside in the same place in memory on the computer um, because they were actually local to the function. So this could not exist outside of the function, so it has to make a copy. Um, which. As you might realize, that means when we go back up to A and then call C's function, um, it's this list that's getting copied over. So C thinks that only A has been printed. So then it'll be A, C, A, C, D. And that's what was causing it to still print its expansions because when it went to this function, it didn't know that it had already been printed. Um, so simply making this, a, a, adding, adding another level of being a pointer. So now it's a pointer to a pointer to a pointer because it's a, it's a pointer to a list of pointers. So instead of copying the list, it's copying the list's address in memory. So that means that now uh, when B gets added to this list, it also gets added to A's list. And then when C gets added, it gets added to all of these. And same with D. So every time it's adding to the same list instead of a copy of that list. So because of that, C is now able to know like, okay, I've already been printed because it can see the same exact list as everything else. So yeah, that's why the pointers were necessary and I had to do them for, you know, the count and capacity variables as well since those are also tied to the list. Awesome. It's fucking working. So I can delete all these printfs except for that one maybe. I need to figure out how I'm actually going to format this because it doesn't really look great as is. Yeah, I think that looks all right. There's like nicer things I could do with like the Unicode like uh, box drawing things, but that is sort of beyond what I want to do right now. I've already spent an hour trying to make this fucking printing thing. And it, honestly, in, in fact, this was originally going to be an episode about f like fixing the Lexer, but um, that is kind of uh, not what happened because this took longer than I thought it would so that's that's where I'm at right now but next time next time we're gonna work on the Lexer and we're gonna get this thing actually fucking running our code or transpiling it 
or something within like the next two videos hopefully we'll have something that can actually transpile a simple program 